Can you imagine a modern household or office without this revolutionary device? The computer? I can't. It takes about 90 minutes to assemble a computer. Its hard drive disk saves information transmitted to it for a long time. The reading head reads the information. It is extremely precise. The space between the reading head and the hard disk is as thin as a hair. The hard disk is installed in its position within the computer. There are two other units which safeguard information. The removable 3-inch disk reader and the CD-ROM reader, which allows for the reading and execution of programs recorded on compact disks. These two units are placed into position. The spinal column of the computer is the motherboard. It is to this unit that the other elements of the computer are connected. This cooler dissipates the heat generated by the chipset. Certain sound cards are integrated directly on the motherboard. These connections, in sequence, are the audio input, its output, and the microphone port. This AGP retaining ring secures the video card during transport. This thermal unit measures the temperature emitted between the processor and the motherboard. The processor is the brain of the system. It interprets, calculates, and executes the instructions given to it. The processor has several millions of transistors, and its cadence, its operating speed, reaches the gigahertz level. The processor rests on this base. The processor's cooler dissipates the intense heat. Its efficiency depends on the type of material used, and a conducting material assures better cooling. The RAM memory stores short-term information, but erases it when the current is turned off. This memory is more rapid than that of the hard disk or the CD-ROM. Now they integrate everything in the case. It protects the internal elements from the external elements. At this stage, they install the electronic components in this case. Several connectors of the case are connected to the motherboard, such as the commutator and various light indicators. This is the output connection for the video card, which links the computer to the monitor. We also see the video chip, which creates images in two and three dimensions. Here is the video memory. The more its capacity is increased, the clearer will be the image displayed on the monitor. The video card is placed into its position. The modem allows two computers to communicate. Its condensers produce the perfectly clean phone signal to facilitate communications. These modem chip connectors control information circulating between the two computers. The fax modem is installed. The power supply transforms electricity according to the voltage required by the different components. The computer's interior cabling is installed. It allows information to travel between the different media and the motherboard. The IDE cable is connected and the CD-ROM. The last, electrical wire, the last electrical wires are connected to different computer components. The assembly of 30 components of the computer is now finished. Just before closing the case, they test each computer to verify the good functioning of the peripherals. Then they close up and proceed to packaging. This company produces about 300 computer units every day. So clear, so perfectly flat, absolutely huge. But let's make it very clear. Manufacturing plate glass is anything but simple.
We can speak of the use of glass since the time of the Egyptians 4,000 years ago. It wasn't used in construction though, but merely to enclose small objects. Later, the Romans became masters of glassmaking, with their methods being used up until the 18th century. By the end of the 19th century, glass was no longer just a luxury item, but became a construction material as common as steel and concrete. Thank <laughs> you.